my understanding, the entry and exit into the, the garages, and then they would be aimed at um, the cashiers and the pay stations. So if there was a, a request to have them on specific floors, those types of things, then that would have to be determined by the location of the garage. If it's inside the mesh area, it's a little bit cheaper. Outside, obviously, it's very expensive. The blocking and masking came up. There is the ability to block out on the stationary cameras. You can block out areas that can't be viewed. And then on the pan, tilt, zoom, you can do that as well, either by redirecting the movement of the camera or actually going in and putting something over, blocking out the lens from the inside. So that, that uh, is possible as well. The moving the cameras to remote locations or using them as uh, uh, portable cameras, for example, for illegal dumping, it's not feasible to use the mobile cameras that we have right now because they're, they're obvious. I mean, they're, they're huge trailer cameras, so you can't put them somewhere unless you're going to use them as a deterrent because I doubt seriously that anybody's going to come and, and illegally dump in front of one of those cameras, although it's not out of the realm of possibility. But there are the uh, covert cameras that can be purchased for about $500. Those are battery operated, and they also can send an alert to uh, our communications section in the event they're, they're motion activated, and in the event that they're activated, they uh, take a series of still pictures, and those can go back to our communications uh, dispatch location where they can, they can send a unit out to investigate that. So moving the, the cameras from the current system to be used remotely is, is not uh, a good use of those cameras, but we can purchase other cameras to be used in, uh, in a uh, covert capacity. 